Welcome to the basics of RC flight. Recently I bought some parts from RC Hobby King or from hobbyking.com. Don't really know much about RC uh, flying, but that's what makes this channel worth watching because you can learn with me. Here is a uh, Turnigy servo. There's lots of different brands. This is just one type. Uh, this is also another Turnigy servo. Bit larger, more torque. Torque means turning power. These are used to control the control surfaces such as ailerons that provide lift or turning moments of a plane in flight. Now, these little things here, I think, attach to that, what, what do you call it, a pivoting point. And you put these little screws in so they grip in. And then you have a wire that connects to the ailerons or push rod. It makes the flaps go up and down. Those that have you been that have been on a plane and looked through a window might have spotted the ailerons or elevons um, which provide greater lift and turning of the plane. Uh, there's there's lots of different types of servos uh, with uh, different weights and masses, and of course the mass affects uh, the the well the aerodynamics and uh, um, the g general flyability of each plane. Um, so you need to think about the weight quite carefully. For example, these ones. I bought a few of these. Uh, I've just got one here. Um, the weight of this one, just focusing on that, is five and a half grams. Uh, the speed that it responds, I think that's what that means, at six volts, it says, there it is, at six volts, uh, is 0 0.1 of a second, so it's quite responsive, I think. Turning is quite a good company. Um, and then uh, you've got 0 0.9 kilos of torque per centimeter. Are the dimensions uh, for those that are interested. And then you've got uh, this one. There's no specs on it, but uh, there it is. It's model. Five model uh, five hundred fifty thousand and ninety M. Okay, they've got a little lead that connects, I think, into the receiver. So you will need a remote controller and a receiver. This plugs into the receiver. I bought some other goodies here. Uh, I thought I'd focus on servos, but I'll make some more videos about lipos, like the power source, which is a battery. This one's a very small one for a very small plane. Uh, if you're thinking about weight, to reduce weight, it's a 300 mAh. You can see in my hand it's quite small. It's got a good discharge rate, and the voltage is 7.4 volts. But it is very tiny and quite lightweight for a very small plane. Um, I'll do a more in-depth video about LiPo batteries, but I just want to show you some examples very quickly. Um, here's another one. It's uh, a... Be careful with storage of these. I keep these in a, in a tin, in a little fireproof bag, because these can uh, go into flames. very rare, I've heard, but it can happen, so it's good to be on the safe side. Um, there you are. That one is quite a bit heavier. Uh, it's, um, what is this? Uh, it is a, uh, I don't know. I really don't. Um, I suppose it's 
Oh, something. It's so 11.1 volt, 1C transmitter pack. 2.65, that could, what could that possibly mean? Let's see, where's that other little battery? Okay, that one says, uh, what, 300 mAh, so I'm guessing that must be 2,650 mAh. Uh, that would make sense for a battery that big. I'll just put that back in the packet. And then there's this big beefy one here. It's quite a bit bigger. It's a 5000 mAh 4S 4 cell battery. Um, I keep my batteries in that tin for now while waiting for my LiPo fireproof bag to arrive. You just see by those cables the amount of power it must be putting out, the thickness. And there you have it a Zippy 5000 mAh high discharge LiPo battery uh, I'll do a more detailed video of how to connect these up and uh, if you're an amateur like me uh, you'll find it quite useful because we'll learn all the basics um, also got some other goodies these uh, connectors that fit onto oh, well, I hope they fit on, I bought the right things uh, yep, looks like they do. They fit straight onto these uh, things here uh, f for charging. I think this is a charging cable. I've got a little charger over here. It's quite a good one. It's an IMAX uh, IMAX B uh, B6 AC version two charger. And as you can see on the sides, I'll do a more detailed one of that in another video so overview of all the things I've got so far I've actually got some other things coming in the post as well quite excited really it's always something I wanted to do it's a servo tester um, let's test servos so I'll do another video on that uh, here is a speed controller which controls the speed of the motor or the throttle from your controller this is a 60 amp one for it's quite for quite a medium sized motor uh, we've got a smaller speed controller so a smaller motor there you go um, some more leads a splitter I think for two batteries if you want to connect two in a parallel I think that's something similar got more leads but they will need to be soldered uh, I'll do a video on soldering um, right from the beginning because uh, I haven't really done much soldering but uh, I'll do one on that so you can see the pitfalls of soldering from an amateur uh, and then we've got that uh, we've also got uh, some more of those and some I think male to female is that or yeah, male to f or just couplers I think they're couplers got some propellers big big propeller there I've ordered some smaller ones in the post, an even bigger one here. Planning to scratch build a plane from cardboard, maybe some foam later on for better aerodynamics. I could uh, play around with the aerofoil shape and see how that affects the lift and if I can make a glider, save on battery power. Alright, so this is tiny little motor. I'm going to make a very small plane with this one. There we go, let's open this box up. Come in a lovely little box. There we go. Tiny little motor. It's the outrunner. So it's the outside spins around, not the inside. And the, the, the uh, what's that called? The spindle or the, I think it's a spindle. Uh, or the shaft, that's it. The shaft is uh, connected to the outside. So the coil and the motor, the motors are stuck to the, the outside, the case, and then there's a coil in the middle that's fixed, that doesn't turn. It's brushless and it's very small. I think it's just two grams. I'll go in a very small plane. Uh, I've got a very big motor here, and I've ordered some uh, medium ones in the post. It's called a, uh, it's from Hobby King. All these things are from Hobby King. 
This one's a donkey. It's called a donkey motor. There it is. Donkey. Hobby King Donkey. ST4010. 820 KV. The K stands for rotations per volt. So if you're putting 11 volts, so it's 11 times 820. Rota 820 rotations per volt. That's what that means. This is also an outrunner motor, and you can see that it draws more current because it's got bigger cables. These are mounting plates. I'm going to cut this video in a moment. It's getting a bit long. Uh, I think I've kind of showed you everything, except um, I've got a Turnigy. I think that's a uh, nine channel radio. It's in the box. I won't do the unboxing now, I'll do that in another video. Um, Turnigy nine channel radio and a receiver uh, to go to make all this to communicate with all this is a 2.4 gigahertz a radio so there's uh, it's locked in there's no interference or little interference and you get better response um, not like those infrared ones where you have to keep pointing it at the actual plane this is uh, what you're supposed what you should be using for some better flying. Um, so I'll do a review of all of these things and uh, and uh, explain them um, as I learn what they are. And I'll be doing lots of research um, for that. And I will be explaining everything in very simple language and try to explain key terminology. So keep watching, subscribe, and uh, enjoy our seaplane building.